enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you believe that? Now I want you to go on to Luke chapter 6 verse 48. Where did this man, it's one of the next slide there. Where did this man dig and build? I used to think that the man who built on the rock and the man who built on the sand found two different locations to build their houses. It's not true. It says in Luke chapter 6 and verse 48, the wise man dug deep. That means he went through the sand and laid his foundation on a rock. So they were both building next to each other. Go to the next slide there. And you see there a picture of sand and rock. You know what the sand is? You may believe in Jesus. But if you live in your mind and your emotions and you don't yield your will, you're still building on sand. And that's why we're shaky. That's when, when some little trial comes, we lose our faith and we get depressed and we complain and murmur and everything. We're built on sand. We just understand the word. We're excited about it. But we don't yield our will. We spend years just being excited, just studying the Bible, but never doing, never doing, doing, doing what the Bible says, never yielding our will. We're like a stubborn child who will never obey the parents. The end result is we're shaky. So we go to the next slide where we see the house that this foolish man built. When the storm came, his house was built on his mind and his emotions, his knowledge of scripture, his getting excited over scripture, excited when he praised the Lord on Sundays, but he never yielded his will, he never denied his will every day when he was tempted. The end result is when a trial comes, the house collapses. Do you understand the story now? Oh, yes. Now we go to the next slide. The man who built on the rock. Same area. But he took the trouble and the effort and the money to dig deep and blast the rock, go right down and lay his foundation on the rock. That means he denied his will. And I tell you, it's easier to live in our mind and emotions. It's easier to just superficially just dig up the sand and build there. It takes an effort to blast the rock. It's costly. It means discipleship. I'm not an evangelist. That's not my calling in the body of Christ. I thank God for the thousands of evangelists who do a wonderful job bringing people to Christ. But God's called me to make disciples out of the people who are converted by the evangelists. And I find in the passage on discipleship that Jesus said, he talked about counting the cost before you build a house. He said, before you build a house, sit down and count the cost. It's cheaper to build on sand. It's costly to go down and deny your will every day and build on the rock. That's why the evangelist says, come forward and accept Christ. And I thank God for people right from the time of Charles Finney down to Billy Graham who invited people forward and many people have come to Christ. Wonderful. I praise God for all those who give invitations. But my calling as a disciple maker, I don't invite people forward. I tell them, sit down and count the cost. <laughs> and tell me after a few days, do you want to follow the Lord or not? Don't get all excited and say, yeah, I want to do it. I'm not against evangelism. But I say the folks who come forward, accept Christ, praise the Lord for that. They have entered the outer court. They need to go on to be filled with the Spirit and they must be then taught to be disciples. To enter through the veil. Follow Jesus. Following Jesus means discipleship. Then their lives will be stable. For Revelation. Wherein John falls down to worship an angel. And the word for angel, by the way, in the Greek, just means messenger. So let's read it like that. He falls down to worship a messenger. And the messenger picks him up and says, don't worship me. Worship God. That's a true preacher. Who will never allow you to worship him. Amen. Who will never allow you to be attached to him. But will point you to Christ. Amen. Now you may make the mistake of admiring him and worshiping him. But if he's a man of God, he'll push you away. Amen. I've had to do that with so many people who try to get attached to me. I said, sorry. I even tell them, I don't want to see you. Till you learn to lean upon Jesus. Because if you lean upon me, you're not going to be stable. You'll be like the man on the sand. Let me turn you to this last slide now. The way of the cross. This is what I really wanted to come to. 
What did Jesus say? How can we follow him? It's from Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Any person, man or woman, I believe all of you say you want to come after Jesus. Listen to Luke 9, 23. If anyone will come after him, here's what you got to do. It's not enough to understand. It's not enough to be excited. It's not enough to praise God with our emotions. You have to deny yourself. Say no to your own will. Take up the cross means die. Here is my will, a horizontal bar. Here is God's will, a vertical bar. And where they cross is the cross on which I have to die to my will so that I do the will of God, just like Jesus in Gethsemane. That's what it means to follow him. All his life he was like that. When he was a little child, he had to obey Joseph and Mary who were imperfect. He was perfect and they were imperfect. Have you ever had to work under a boss who knew only 10% of what you know? <laughs> or was imperfect and corrupt? Was that easy? Can you imagine Jesus as a little boy, perfect in every way, seeing Joseph and Mary quarreling and not disrespecting them. Do you believe Joseph and Mary quarreled? Do Christian husbands and wives quarrel? What about Joseph and Mary? Yeah, St. Joseph and St. Mary, they quarreled. And Jesus, <laughs> Jesus saw that and he would not despise them. That's spirituality. Why did he do that? He denied his own will to do the will of the Father. They spat on him. He said, Father, forgive them. They would call him Beelzebub, and he didn't sue them for defamation. No. He denied his own will all the time. And he's given us an example. If any man will come after me, let him take up the cross. And it says there in Luke 9, 23, every day we receive Christ as our Savior once. We get baptized once. But that full verse is not there. You go on from there, you read every day. You have to deny yourself if you want to follow Jesus. This is true spirituality. So I hope you've understood now a little bit of what it means to be soulish, to living in your mind and emotions, or spiritual. Worship, go beyond your mind and emotions, thank God for all of that, into a daily life of worship which is not always words. The highest form of worship is sometimes in silence, living in the most holy place. My God, how wonderful thou art. Thy majesty, how bright. Father of Jesus, love's reward. What rapture will it be? Prostrate before thy throne to lie and gaze and gaze on thee. Do you understand that? Do you get bored living in God's presence? Why is that? Because we are living in the soul so much. In his presence there is fullness of joy. It says in that verse, at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You will not want the pleasures of internet pornography when you're living in the most holy place. That's the way to overcome. When you have the food in the father's table, you will not want to eat what the pigs are eating, like the prodigal son. It's no use telling them, give up the pig's food, give up the pig's food. Come and eat at the father's table. Deny yourself and live in God's presence. It's one thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit right at the beginning. Maybe some of you are filled with the Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you something I've discovered about being filled with the Holy Spirit. When you walk the way of the cross, this way of denying yourself every day. You know, when we come to Christ initially, our capacity is like a cup. The Bible speaks about the cup of salvation. I say, Lord, fill me. He fills the cup. But as I walk the way of the cross, the cup expands and becomes like a bucket and he's got to fill me again and as I continue to walk the way of the cross the bucket becomes like a big tub and he fills me again and I continue going that way of the cross the tub becomes like a pond and he fills me again and the pond becomes a river and finally many rivers and then is fulfilled the scripture where Jesus said if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. From his innermost being, not from his soul. John 7, 37 and 38. From his innermost being, from his spirit, 
will flow rivers of living water. And that is God's will for every one of us. That we should come into this life where God is able to pen, reach down to our innermost being and make us a blessing to thousands of people around us. I want to in invite you, my brothers and sisters, to this higher life beyond the soul to life in the Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you, if you want to know more about soul and spirit, to read this book. It's called Living as Jesus Lived. Now, most people think that's impossible. I want to invite you to read that book. And there's the website, cfcindia.com. It's all free. There are many other books and messages there. Word that the Holy Spirit's saying to those who have ears to hear, hear this morning. My son, my daughter, come up higher from where you live. Don't live at that low level. Don't spend your life eating pig's food. Come and sit at my table. Will you count the cost and say, yes, Lord, I'm willing. This is the life I want to live in the few more years that are left before Jesus comes again. In a moment of silence, as you stand in the presence or sit in the presence of God, I want to invite you to respond to him. Start with that one area, that one small area where God spoke to you this morning. And say, Lord, I want to yield there. And then God will show you the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. And it will be a way in which you walk. And I tell you, you will experience a glorious life such as you have never experienced till today. The Lord is inviting you to make a crucial decision today. This is a moment of crucial decision for you. Say, Lord, I've counted the cost. This is the way I want to go. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus' name, amen.